Does buy once and upgrade forever actually hold up? Tom here from Lore Systems, and I'm here to talk about upgrading my framework laptop to the new AMD Ryzen AI 7350 and NVIDIA RTX 5070. Now, before we get too far, this video is not sponsored. I bought my original Framework laptop from Wendell over at Level 1 Techs. And then Framework reached out to Wendell and let him know about these new upgrade parts being available and he forwarded it over to me. While Framework did send me the new upgrade parts at no cost, they didn't see this video before it uploaded, they did not ask for approval, and all opinions here are my own. When I first got my Framework, it had the Ryzen 7040 and the Radeon RX 77S. Now overall this worked quite well, except the Radeon and Linux and video editing, well, it was and this not a great experience, but it was powerful, quiet, and it ran Ubuntu just fine. When I did my initial review of the framework, people made good points in the comments stating that it's only really upgradable if framework or maybe some third party actually built those parts. So when that was officially announced, I was actually pretty excited. This is a concept I really want to see keep moving forward. The idea of being able to choose and upgrade components is a long time feature of the PC world, but always felt like an out of reach concept and never really implemented well in the laptop ecosystem. And I really think frameworks here to change that. Now let's talk about actually doing the upgrade. Well, years ago, I did have a retail computer store. It's been a while since I tore down a laptop. I have opened up the framework a few times and I appreciate how simple it was to move the touchpad and keyboard around. I figured taking out the motherboard though would be a whole lot more work and well, much more fiddly. But FrameMakers really thought out the engineering to make this simple. No searching for some random YouTube video trying to figure out how it comes apart. Framework has all the details on their site and QR codes on all the parts that link you right to the relevant help page. This made taking the screws and taking out the motherboard really easy. One thing I found interesting was how the graphics card fits in and is connected to the motherboard. This clever little connector allows that module in particular to be upgraded with very minimal effort and just a few screws in a few minutes of your time. You just slide the graphics card out and it doesn't require removing the motherboard. So the graphics card, I would say, is reasonably close to how easy it is to upgrade in a normal PC. And here's what that graphics card looks like sitting next to the old motherboard so you can kind of see how they align up when they're not in the case. Speaking of not being in the case, do check out Hardware Haven's video that I'll link down below. He has a great upgrade he did on his. Also interesting that he took the old motherboard and 3D printed a case for it. And I'm shocked at how easy Framework makes that process. They didn't just say, hey, you can use this outside of the framework itself, they added the extra features needed, such as a power on button and even a little coin battery spot to keep the time working properly. I'm really impressed that the company doesn't just offer you a motherboard that works in their system. It can work outside of their system too. This is just one more way I think frameworks really helping the ecosystem. And one of the reasons I like this company so much. Now that we have the system all assembled, let's talk performance. The Framework 16 laptop was able to score on Geekbench a 2,924 single core performance and a 13,525 multi-core. I'll leave a link to the full score so you can see all the details, but I'm gonna say it's quite fast. Matter of fact, running Ubuntu 2510, I would call it quite zippy when I'm going through all these windows and moving through things. Now, while I'm using it for obviously daily tasks, surfing the web, I never hear the fans. But what about when I do a little bit of LLM testing? And I'm testing out the Mistral 7B and Quen 7B instruction, the Q4KM and the Q5KM for the Mistral. So these both are models that will fit with this 5070 for locally hosted AI. I'm using anything LLM and it's quite fast. And while I'm carrying on this conversation with my graphics card and doing a few queries here and there, the fans don't even spin up. They may be moving, but they're not quite making any noise. The system is actually, at least for the general Q&A and fun things I may ask it to do, I'm not really overly intense with it, it stays quiet. This is something I really like is that it has good thermal controls, but of course, all that goes out the door once we get into gaming. Gaming performance on this is really nice. Running the Cyberpunk benchmark demo, we're getting 56 frames a second with ray tracing set to medium and a resolution of 1680-1050. The playback of all this should be pretty smooth. I think OBS does a good job of capturing it. So obviously it's also running OBS and recording at the same time so I can capture and share this with you. But overall, it feels really smooth. But of course, how loud is it? Well, generally I'm wearing headphones, by the way, Bluetooth headphones that have no problem pairing and connecting with this system. And that keeps the noise at bay, but this one's not too bad. You're only looking at about roughly 52 decibels when the system's really ramped up and I've been playing for a while. 
So this didn't really cause me any distress. As I said, I'm usually wearing headphones, so it wasn't a problem, but obviously there is some noise, but the system doesn't seem to get any louder even after, well, a few hours that I put in playing some games. Now let's get controversial. Let's talk about the operating system on this. I see this as a Linux laptop. I know you can run Windows, but I don't feel like I run into a lot of people that choose framework for running Windows. My guess is many of you watching this are choosing this as your Linux laptop, and being that it's very Linux friendly, that opens up a lot of choices. If it only worked with one distribution, it would actually be easier and probably more hated because that would be more controversy because you would just choose that distro, but it's very welcoming to many distros and some distros are more controversial than others. I completely don't really understand this. I've always been a Debian on the server side, Ubuntu on desktop and Pop OS for media creation or desktop. So either one of those choices are good. I still like Pop OS. I just am not ready for the Cosmic Desktop as of right now here in November 2025. Their new desktop, I believe, is still in beta, so I haven't really spent a lot of time with it, but maybe I will switch to that on here. I'm sure it'll run fine. For now, Ubuntu 2510 fits the bill. All the devices work. The fingerprint reader reads my fingerprint and lets me log in, and it saves me when I type sudo touching fingerprint reader from typing my really long high entropy password each time for a sudo command. So that is a nice convenience. Matter of fact, I like that so much. It's something I feel like a fingerprint reader next to my desktop would be great. So I can just go, you know, I'll touch this. Or of course, someone's like, oh, Tom, why aren't you just touching a YubiKey and et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. Now, durability. I've only had this for a bit. Uh, Wendell and me and him talk about the corner holding of laptops, which... I don't know, maybe it's just a sign of when you're wandering around in a data center somewhere and you just carry it like that. I grab it by the corner, I hold it while it's open. But while it was going through the airport, um, incident did occur. So we do have a little scuff and a little bend in it, but it didn't break the screen. I was actually surprised. So this has been not just corner holding, tested, wandering around and bumped into things. This has now gone through a pretty serious drop test that I assumed broke it. But I opened it up and the screen came on and I was impressed that there's an actual bend in the frame, but the screen's fine. Don't try that at home. I don't recommend it. But being that this is very serviceable, I can buy a new frame. At the same time, when I do that, I will probably swap out the webcam. They have a Gen 2 webcam. And once again, I feel this answers that question I asked at the very beginning of the video. Does buy once and upgrade forever hold up? And so far that answer is yes. Now, I'm not gonna tell you and try to sell you on this as the best value, the cheapest laptop, the best deal out there, but it fits what I want. It fits what probably a lot of you watching this want, a laptop that's more modular, open. You can buy parts without just hunting random things down on eBay. I can get newer generation webcams or other modules for it. And that makes me happy. This is something I want to see succeed. It does cost me more to have something like this. The choices made when you're looking at different tools for different things, and I obviously started quite a bit of controversy when I posted a video about me switching my video editing to Mac and making people very angry. It, it just, I hate the trade-off I had to do. It is Oddly, and I know this will be controversial when I state it again, less expensive to get a Mac to do editing, which is weird because I always thought of them as the good for editing, but also more expensive choice. But the way everything is consolidated to well, everything system on a chip, really tight with really no upgradability, does come with some affordability on it. There are expenses and compromises made to make something very modular. We can swap the graphics card out. We can swap things out in well, relatively easy fashion here. Even the motherboard did not take long to swap out. And that comes though at a cost. There's a lot more engineering into it. Someone had to think about not just how to assemble it, but how to make it disassemblable and not just glued in. Is disassemblable a word? Or did I make that up? The choice is yours. And that's what I like. There is an option if you're looking for it. I think the framework's a good choice, but if you don't have the extra funds for this, I can't recommend it. It's, as I said, and I just wanna reiterate, I'm not saying it is going to be the least expensive choice, but I think in the long term, it presents a really reasonable value as these upgrades come out. And maybe third parties will come up with an upgrade for some things in here. There's already people 3D printing extra little modules to put on the bottom. There's a 
open community around this, and I really want to encourage it. So that's my thoughts on the Framework 16 upgrade, but what are yours? Leave them in the comments down below, or head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com, to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Thanks.